And I'm going to cut straight to the chase. Medicare now pays 99441 or telephonic visits the same as 99212 through 214. There's parity in payment during the COVID-19 public health emergency. Hello, my name is John Lin. I'm a urologist here in Gilbert, Arizona, also your humble host of the Thriving Urology Practice Facebook group where we crowdsource practice management solutions for everyone's benefit. In the group today, Michelle Johnson posted something from Medicare saying that, hey, you know what? They are now paying the same for ENM visits as 9944441 through 443 or audio only telephonic visits when it comes to telemedicine. I thought, nah, can't be true. It's got to be fake news. But no, it's actually true. It came directly from CMS. CMS.gov, newsroom, press kit. Trump administration issues second round of sweeping changes to support U.S. healthcare system during COVID-19 pandemic. Unbelievable. I mean, if things weren't crazy enough, starting from the end of March, when CMS 1744 interim final rule came out, making huge changes to telemedicine, e &M visits, and also telephone audio only visits, I mean, some of the changes, just to recap, they eliminated originating site requirements, meaning patients can now be at home and we can now deliver telemedicine services and most, more importantly, be paid for it. That's one of the big hurdles in the past is that there's no payment and also, also legal and regulation issues. So now that's gone. The patients can be at home. And not only that, we can use Skype, FaceTime, the patients can use a their their smartphones so for us to deliver telemedicine services to the, to, to them and um, when it comes to evaluation and management telephone uh, telemedicine services we no longer need we no longer no longer need history or physical examination documentation when it when it comes to billing for a level during the covid-19 public health emergency i mean those are huge huge changes and hurdles in addition, if you're thinking about billing by time, in the past, you have to document 50% of the visit was involved in counseling and coordination of care, and you can only bill for the amount of time that you spent face-to-face -face with the patient. During the current emergency, that is also gone. In addition, you count not just the face-to-face -face time, you count the entire day's time that you spent to take care of this one patient. For instance, if you looked at the chart beforehand, if you coordinated the care after the telephone or the e and I'm sorry, the e &M visit, the uh, synchronized audio and video, video, audio and video visit, you add up all that time that you spent in one day to bill for the appropriate level. Now, the latest change comes from CMS, and this is from interim final rule 55341, and it's a 279-page document. Now, I know you guys are thinking, great, now, there's, there's all these broad strokes and, and things like that. Give me the nitty-gritty. Give me the backup, right? You, these, you guys, billers and coders, you want to see the actual language in the, uh, in the uh, CMS IFC. It's amazing how CMS has really bypassed the need for the notice of proposed rulemaking and then going through the hoops before they come out with these interim final uh, rules. It's um, I, I used to rag on, on the government and saying how slow they are to react and stuff like that. But when it comes to this public health emergency, I have to hand it to them. They made large sweeping changes to really take care of the patients and allow us physicians to take care of patients in the most effective way possible. So I really, uh, really have to tip my hat to them when, when, uh, when the you know what hit the fan. They uh, they came through. Now, obviously not perfectly, but they came through in this case. And in my opinion, okay. So what is the big deal? In the past, in the recent past, in the past few weeks, as a matter of fact, I said that it is almost not worth your while to perform these telephonic visits because of payment disparity. The physician or the provider is assuming the same risk and doing the same amount of work when on the telephone, 
as well as doing doing it with a synchronized video and audio type of visit with the patient. Now CMS recognize the fact that it does take just amount just about as much work to provide the audio only visit and consequently they made some changes during this public health emergency and also during the, the uh, current round of um, uh, rulemaking. Uh, just for those of you who are not familiar, the uh, CMS telephonic audio only visits are 99441, 442, and 443. And for 441, it's five to 10 minutes of medical dis discussion and 442 is 11 to 20 minutes, and 443 is 21 to 30 minutes. It used to pay $14 for the 441 and $41 for the 443. For ENM visits, 99212, or level two established patient, to 99214, it pays about 46 to $110. What CMS has done is that they made the payment for telephone audio only visits pay the same as 99212 through 214, meaning level two through four established patients. And this is now retroactive to March 1st of 2020. That is quite impressive. Now I can't really say that it's not worth your while to get on the phone to talk to the patient to take care of them via audio because now there's payment parity. My question and when it comes to efficiency for providers is that if your staff, if your workflow is efficient enough, you shouldn't take that long to reach level three or level four when it comes to e &M visits using synchronized audio and video. I will still maintain that it is less efficient from a productivity perspective to engage in visits using time-based billing because if you are doing things correctly, you, you, you are more effective and more efficient in seeing patients if you use synchronized audio and video. And based on my recent experience, in telemedicine, I think I get a lot more when I have the synchronized audio and video. Just this afternoon, for instance, I saw 10 telemedicine visits. I was able to schedule them every 10 minutes. And um, I, I had a couple of prostate cancer discussions. And I was able to not only show the patient the actual biopsy pathology, I was able to securely send them a PDF through the platform that I use a copy of their pathology report. In addition, if I wanted to recommend a prostate cancer book, I was able to send them a link on Amazon so that they can buy the prostate cancer book. So there's really no way that they can say, well, I wasn't given enough information about my prostate cancer. So that's another benefit that you get from synchronized audio and video, in addition to being able to see the patients much more efficiently. Furthermore, I was able to not only hear who was at the other end of the camera, I was able to see that there was the patient, his wife, his daughter-in-law, and also his son. And I was able to counsel his son, whose dad was just diagnosed with prostate cancer, that he now needs prostate cancer screening because he is now 40 years old. So I think there's a lot of benefits to synchronized audio and video, not just from productivity perspective, but also from being able to really take care of the patient in the best way possible. In addition, if you actually need physical examination, not that it's actually needed uh, for e &M visit, but if you want to do a, a physical examination, you can do it with a, a synchronized audio and video platform. So that is the big news. Parity in payment between 99441 through three, which is audio only telephone visit with 99212 through four. So level two established to level four established. Now there's a crosswalk. And speaking of crosswalks, for those of you who are interested in the actual page and language, here it is on page 139, 
CMS says we are crosswalking CPT codes 99212, 213, and 214 to 99441, 442, and 443, respectively. Now, you may be thinking, well, this is great. Maybe that translates to qualified non-physician provider telephonic visits. Unfortunately, it does not. CMS stated on, this, on page 140, they are not finalizing increased payments rates for CPT codes 98966 through 98968. Those are telephonic visits for qualified non-physician providers, meaning maybe your MA and, uh, and uh, the like, who provide telephonic services to the patient within the seven day period. You can look up the language in the uh, CPT, CPT descriptor if you wish, but um, that is the big news. If you are interested in reading the 279 page document, I have placed the link in the video description. In addition, if you want to look at the cms.gov newsroom announcement, that is also in the video description. Any comments or questions, please leave them below. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good night.